Welcome back motorized bike enthusiasts. In today's video we're going to be exclusively talking about the two-stroke motorized bike clutch systems. By the end of this video you should have all the information you need to diagnose, repair, and prevent any issue from happening with these clutch systems that I know about over the past four years of dealing with them. I do realize that many of you are probably watching this video right now because you have an issue that you want to fix. Rest assured, it's probably going to get fixed by the end of the video. However, I don't recommend randomly jumping around this video because if you miss some information about these specific parts, you might not be able to prevent that problem from happening again along with many other problems which are common. In this video, we're going to go over basic information about each individual part on the clutch system, uh, preventative maintenance, diagnosing problems, and repairing problems. Let's go over the parts and talk about some basic information that you need to know, starting with the clutch lever. There's a barrel nut on the end of each clutch lever in these kits. This is not designed for long-term adjustments. The only time you ever need to be unscrewing this barrel nut is if you had an issue pop up while you're riding and you need that adjustment to take up the play. If you're using this to permanently adjust your clutch cable tension, you're damaging parts. Uh, and when you have a problem down the road, you won't have much left to play with if you need to give it more tension. This should be screwed in at all times and only used when it's required. Simply put, this is not the proper way to adjust a clutch cable. The cables in these kits do not come with an end cap on their cables for a specific reason. It's because often you need to remove and reinsert this when you're taking off a motor, doing repairs, or just basic adjustments. However, I do recommend putting an end cap on this cable when you're riding your pants, shoelaces, your shoes, socks, whatever. They'll begin to fray this slowly over time, just rubbing against it. And once this cable becomes frayed and you take it out of the clutch arm, it is very difficult to reinsert. So if you can prevent this from fraying with a cap, I highly recommend using it. You can pop them off, sometimes you can reuse them, but even if you don't, they're pennies. All these kits should come with puller tools. These are used to remove various parts on the motor kit. For the clutch system, the largest thread is used for the sprocket and the entire clutch assembly itself. When you inevitably have to use this tool to remove something, it's very important that you clean the threads on the tool and the part, and then you oil the threads on the tool and the part. You want to ensure that this tool is screwed in as far as you can go. You want it bottomed out on the tool if possible before you begin to pull your part off the motor. You need as many threads cleanly engaged on the parts, otherwise these strip out very easily. In the best case scenario, you'll strip out the tool, which is just a headache, but they're cheap and easy to replace. The worst case scenario, if you strip out the threads on one of the parts, there's a good chance you're never getting it off that bike. Clutch pads. There are two types of clutch pads that I have experienced dealing with on these kits. The super cheap pencil erasers and the more quality pads. You'll find these pads on things like the Sutec PK80s and usually the Firestorm 4040s. I've experienced using both of these clutch pads and honestly, these are fine for stock motors. I do notice these tend to make a little more noise. On occasion, they can squeak, but it's not the end of the world. However, they don't quite grip as well as the quality clutch pads. This isn't really gonna matter for a stock build, especially on a 26 inch bike or smaller, where you just don't have that much torque or resistance to cause them to slip. Both of these quality sets of clutch pads do have break-in periods or bedding-in periods. When you've properly adjusted your clutch system, it is common after the first few rides for you to have to readjust it, take up slack. As these have become compressed or bedded in, this is normal. Usually you'll only have to adjust once, maybe twice. Bearings. The main bearings and clutch bearings on the motor kits are identical in size and dimensions. However, there are some slight differences. On all the kits that I've seen, the clutch bearings use the shielded bearings, and this is 6202Z if you need to replace yours. Okay, they're shielded on both sides. I personally prefer to replace these when they wear out with sealed bearings. This is the 6202RS. 
Sealed bearings are a little more fragile against large debris, so if a rock gets between your sprocket and the bearing, which I've never had happen, uh, but it could potentially damage the seal before it would damage a shield. However, the seal is resistant against fine particles and water, whereas the shield is not. Water, little bits of sand, dirt can get in here and grind out your bearings over time, but it can't really get into the sealed bearings unless the seal is damaged. So I prefer to use the sealed bearings, especially because I like to ride in dusty roads where there's a lot of fine particles. Also, if you neglect your bike on a shielded bearing, say you rode in some mud, or you rode in a lot of rain and you didn't get a chance to clean your bike and oil, grease, WD-40 bits and pieces for a week or two, these can seize up really easy. Where these are protected quite well against neglect. The main bearings that your motor uses on the crankshaft are essentially the same, however they'll have the shield removed so that the fuel and oil mix can lubricate the bearings. So if you need to replace your main bearing, you can use the same for your clutch. You'll just have to pop out the seal. I would recommend getting a sealed set and removing the seal because at a lot of these, you can't really remove the shield without damaging the bearing itself. A common issue is clutch slipping. This can be caused by a few different things, but one of them is actual lack of grip because debris has gotten on your clutch pads and or your pressure plates. There are two pressure plates. There's this one, and there's this one, the one spinning in the back. When you disengage your clutch, you let off the clutch lever. This pressure plate closes, sandwiching your clutch pads between these two plates. Okay, so you want to make sure you don't get grease or oil on this one or this one. Otherwise, your clutch will start to slip. A bit of probably useless information is the way your motor transfers its energy from the bevel gear to the clutch is by these side walls that hold in the clutch pads. Okay, now we're going to talk about adjustments, clutch cam, bucking bar, bucking bar bearing. These all, all kind of go hand in hand and they're probably the most common issue. I would say issues with the clutch cam and bucking bar are more common than something like getting grease on your clutch pads. These are all cheap parts and easy to get off of like Amazon. So if you've damaged yours, don't worry. In two to three days, you can have another set for 10 to $15, something like that. Here we have a pristine clutch cam. It's got sharp edges, no rounding. This is a standard new bucking bar. This is how they should look. Straight, tapered edge. Tapered in, not out. And a standard bucking bar bearing. Shiny, clean, no pits. This is how you want yours to look. This is a used one. It's in acceptable condition. This is a used one in poor condition. You can see it's darker. It's experienced a lot of heat. It's been burnt. And although you can't see it in the camera, there's some pitting. This is a used clutch cam, which I will say is still in acceptable condition. However, it does have some damage and will cause excessive wear over time if continued to be used. It has a rounded edge where the cam engages with the bucking bar. And here are two poor condition bucking bars. These tend to experience the most amount of decay. This one here tends to be the worst, so we'll check it out. You'll notice some burrs and the tip is mushroomed out. This isn't the worst one I've seen, but it's pretty bad. However, this could still be used for a few hundred miles. You'll note here where the bucking bar engages the bearing that it's actually hollowed out by the bearing itself. New, used. So let's talk about what can cause these issues. There's two of them. One of them most of you probably already know. That's a lack of grease. You need to grease these, I'd say every two weeks of riding that would keep them in pretty good condition for quite a long time. However, if you forget to grease them, especially 
on a new motor, which they usually never come greased, then you'll have them become damaged quite quickly. You'll notice that you'll adjust your clutch, everything will be fine, you'll ride your bike a couple of times and the clutch slowly starts to get more slack in it. And at some point, these will become so damaged that you can no longer adjust your clutch, the flower nut, the cable, the barrel nut, to a point where the motor will disengage. A symptom that you have a damaged bucking bar cam or bearing, it's usually all of them, is usually that you'll no longer be able to disengage the motor from the bike. You'll pull in the clutch, but the motor will still want to keep pulling. That uh, usually means these have become damaged. There is another thing that can cause that. It's a, more of a rare issue, but we'll get into that. So yes, grease these when you first get your motor and grease them every two weeks of riding. Clean them before you grease them. When you go to clean the bucking bar and the shaft that it goes into, do not use degreaser in that shaft because that can actually sit in there and pool and decay any fresh grease that you put in. You can clean the bucking bar, the bearing, the cam with degreaser, but don't spray degreaser into the motor itself into the actual clutch shaft okay just use a paper towel stick it in clean it and then put fresh grease in another very common issue which a lot of you are probably doing and you don't even realize it that can cause these to wear out excessively even if they are greased is not setting your clutch arm before you adjust the flower nut and or cable when you initially set up your clutch, and you should keep it this way over time, you need to make sure that the clutch cam is set in a neutral position. Then you adjust your cable and your flower nut. The neutral position for the clutch cam could be different on each motor, it's usually about the same, but it really just depends on how they set up these teeth in the factory. Okay, as you can see, these are keyed and they press on. You can remove them, it's kind of difficult but there's really no need to unless it's severely out of alignment. If it's only off a few teeth, it's no big deal. It just means you have to um, compensate for that during adjustment. To set your clutch arm up in the neutral position, you'll want to note where that is when this cover is off of the bike. You want this clutch cam to be flat so that when the bar sits on top of it, it's as low as possible. So right here is our neutral position for the clutch arm. If we go further out, it'll start to lift the bar. If we go further in, it'll start to lift the bar. So just give yourself a mental note of this position. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but the closer you get to neutral, the more adjustment you'll have, the more engagement you'll have on the clutch lever, which makes things like feathering easier, and the less wear you'll have on the bucking bar, as well as the cam. A lot of people will not pay any attention to this and when you set up your bike maybe you'll have the clutch arm in this position and you'll think that's fine because you've still got all this but you actually don't you have a very limited amount of usable travel there is a point where this will turn and it'll no longer have any more adjustment because this cam is only so big okay so if you were to have your clutch arm set up in about this position which is where i see a lot of people have it you'll notice that the actual cam itself is about halfway engaged that means that that thin edge of the cam is constantly pushing on the bucking bar and that is usually what's wearing out your clutch cam and your bucking bar even if you have grease okay so move it in to the neutral position and then set your clutch this is also helpful on builds that are tight because you'll have more space before this bar hits things like the down tube or the carburetor. Okay, let's talk about another issue which is clutch slipping. Now obviously we've already been over the pads. If you have contamination on the pads, that can definitely cause the clutch to slip. However, it could just be a poorly adjusted flower nut. There is a black flower nut that sits here on top of the clutch shaft along with the set screw. If your set screw is missing or the threads are damaged, your flower nut can come out of alignment. Okay, if that screw falls out or whatever, you have nothing to hold the flower nut in. So as you're riding the bike, it'll begin to usually loosen, but it might be able to tighten as well. 
When you loosen the flower nut, it will move the clutch plate further away from the clutch pads. So if you're in a situation where you're having trouble disengaging the clutch, or you just don't like where the engagement point is on the lever, because you can fine tune your engagement point to where you want it to be, then you can loosen the flower nut, and that will give you less pressure on the clutch pads when you pull in the clutch. It'll move this further away from the clutch pads. If your flower nut is too far out and you let off the clutch, it won't push hard enough against the clutch pads, and that can be causing slippage. So one of the first things you should check if your clutch is slipping and you know that the pads aren't dirty is you should go ahead and tighten your flower nut one notch, maybe two, depending on how much play you have in the clutch cable. If your flower nut is too tight, then you won't be able to properly disengage the clutch. The motor will continue to want to pull the bike, or you'll have to pull the clutch in really far before it will disengage from the clutch pads. So once again, that's also fine tuning where you want your engagement and disengagement to be on the clutch lever. Let's go ahead and talk about an issue I ran into one time, which was where I would adjust the flower nut, have proper tension where I wanted it to be, and as soon as I would go to try and start the bike, the clutch would slip. I'd readjust the flower nut, try to start the bike again, the clutch would slip. It was an immediate issue, not a slow, gradual one over time. This was caused by simple user error. I had removed the clutch assembly at some point, and when I put it back on, I forgot to reinsert the woodruff key. Essentially, I lost it. That goes in this little slot here, and it lines up with a slot on the clutch shaft. However, yours could become damaged. These can strip out. The keyway itself can round out and become stripped. The key can snap, or the key can strip. Or you could have just lost it when you took this plate off. There have also been viewers who have mentioned that theirs simply did not come with one. That's possible too. From the factory, your keyway might just be missing. I get mine from AutoZone. I find them in a package of random assortment wood drift keys. So, I mean, you can get them online from dedicated motorized bike shops, Amazon, eBay, but usually just go to AutoZone and pick up a pack of them and then grab the right size out and stick it in. The purpose of this bearing, by the way, is to act kind of like a washer. It's to reduce some of the friction caused by the rotating parts. See, as the clutch shaft is spinning, so is the bucking bar, so is the bearing, and the pin that the bearing itself pushes on. But they're free-floating parts, so each one can be spinning at a different speed. The bearing's basically just there to give a very slight point of contact so that friction is reduced. But if you don't grease it, even the bearing can only do so much. Now, if you lose your bearing, you'll know right away because no matter how much adjustment you give the cable, the barrel nut, or the flower nut, you'll never be able to disengage the clutch. And if you do, it might only just be a tiny, tiny bit. I'd also like to note that I have purchased bucking bars that have come slightly longer than stock by a few millimeters. This is important to note because as you install a new one, not only will the difference because of how much wear there is, but the difference in the length of the bar itself might cause you to have to readjust the flower nut. All these kits come with two springs for the clutch assembly. This outer spring, which is a heat shield, protects the cable sleeve from the heat of the motor. And an inner spring, which you see is not installed, that's a return spring for the clutch arm. Under normal circumstances, so long as you have this thoroughly greased, you don't need this return spring. I don't like to use it because it, it adds fatigue during long rides by putting too much resistance on the clutch cable. When you go to pull in the clutch lever, it's more difficult with this inner spring, so I tend not to use it. However, it does technically add life to the clutch cam and bucking bar by forcibly returning the clutch arm to the neutral position. However, if you're using that spring and this clutch arm is not adjusted to the neutral position, it doesn't matter anyways because you're still rubbing against the bucking bar. It's quite common for these three bolts, especially on new builds, to vibrate loose. I don't personally use Loctite on these, but I do ensure that they are very tight 
without going overboard. A symptom that your bolts might be coming loose on this clutch cover while you're riding is that you may no longer be able to disengage the clutch. As these bolts loosen up, the entire cover will begin to migrate away from the engine and the clutch cam will no longer engage the bucking bar. If this happens, but you'll pull on the clutch, it'll feel real spongy, a lot of give, and your motor will continue to want to pull the bike. As mentioned earlier in the video, there's other things that can cause this, but if you happen to notice while you're just riding and not really using the clutch must, definitely stop and make sure you're not losing your bolts. So on this build, the cam is pretty much already set in the neutral position. I could go a little bit further out to get it perfectly flat on the clutch cam. However, it's such a small amount, I'm not going to worry about it. It's got fresh grease on it. It's a clean setup. However, I do notice that the barrel nut for the clutch lever is out, which means at some point I was riding this bike, I had an issue, I had to take up some slack. I obviously came home and fixed the issue because the bike is running great right now and the clutch cam is set. However, I must have forgot to take up the slack. So this is really easy for me. All I'm going to do is just screw this in all the way because you never want to keep this out. You won't have it when you need it. Now, <clears throat> keeping our clutch cam in about the neutral position, which is right about there, I'm going to take up some of the slack. Now if we loosen our cable, you'll actually be able to feel neutral without taking this entire cover off, but it's still a good idea to take this off because you do need to grease and clean it every once in a while. So as we push in this lever, right here I can feel this is where it engages the bucking bar. I don't want to leave it rubbing on the bucking bar, so I'm going to let it out just a hair. And that is where I want my clutch cam to be set. Because at this point, it's not putting any pressure on the bucking bar. It won't mushroom out the bar. It won't round off the cam. If I leave it pushed up against the bucking bar, then you constantly have wear while the engine is running. Whether you're idling, you're engaged or disengaged on the clutch, there is constant wear on that cam if you have it pushed up against the bucking bar. I see a lot of builds where their cam is set about there, sometimes worse, and they leave it there because they just don't know any better. This much pressure on that bucking bar is very very bad. Now in a lot of cases you might be thinking I could just adjust the flower nut that would push the bucking bar further in towards the motor and I wouldn't have that pressure on the cam so it wouldn't be wearing out the parts. That is technically true. If you've adjusted your flower nut to match this position you're not causing excessive wear. However you're losing engagement adjustment because the cam is already about halfway engaged there's a point where you can rotate this in and you'll no longer have any cam left to push on the bucking bar. So if your clutch arm is pushed into the motor and you've adjusted your flower nut and your cable to match that position, and then down the road you notice that as you pull in your clutch, it's just not doing anything anymore. Well, that's probably because you've just run out of cam, okay? You're already to the full rounded portion of the cam and there's nothing left for it to push on. Now that we first set our lever in the neutral position, we then took up the slack in our cable while ensuring that the barrel nut on the clutch lever is screwed in all the way, then we will go ahead and adjust the flower nut. Okay, while you're in here, make sure that you go ahead and put a bit of grease on the bevel gear. I recently already have, this is all fresh, so we're good there. You want to make sure that you have your set screw. We do, that's good. And from this point, you can make any of your adjustments that you need to make the bike roadworthy. All right guys, thanks for joining us. I hope this answered all the questions you have for clutches and you've been able to fix any issue you might be having as well as prevent issues in the future. If you have any questions that I didn't answer in this video, go ahead and ask in the comment. And if you have any good information that I also forgot to mention, let me know. I'll make sure I pin it in the comment section. Until the next video guys, ride safe.